Okay, so this video is the second video I've made talking about co-design and collaboration uh, and my co-designer Rob Fisher will be chipping in, diving into this video and talking about how we developed the game Compromat which came out in uh, in the, the sort of autumn of, of, of 2020. Uh, so Compromat is just becoming available at this point. Um, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how the game works, what it's all about. I'm gonna show you some footage of the game on Tabletopia, uh, where you can play the game for free. And I'm gonna have a, a detailed conversation with Rob about how we put the game together, what we were aiming for, what our processes were, how we collaborate, uh, how we ended up pitching it to Helvetik, the publisher who ended Ended up making it and how it eventually came to market in this particular form. So let's start off by looking at how the game works. Compromat is a game for exactly two players who take on the roles of rival spies competing by taking on daring missions in pursuit of victory points. The gameplay will be familiar to players of Blackjack or 21 or Pontoon as players attempt to outscore each other over several hands but never going over 21. Each player has an identical deck of cards with number values, and each round four missions are revealed. On a player's turn, they reveal a card from the top of their deck, and then they assign it face up to the mission of their choice. They may then add as many cards as they wish, one at a time from their deck, looking at the cards, but playing them face down so the other players don't know which cards they have in play. If the total exceeds 21, then the player must stop adding cards, but they don't have to reveal this to the other player. And when a player stops, either through choice or because they're over 21, then the other player takes their turn. And so that sequence continues until each player has placed cards on all four of the missions. Now the cards for each mission are revealed, and if a player has scored more than 21, they're bust. They take one notoriety token and they discard their cards. If a player scores exactly 21, they may lose one notoriety token. And then the highest scorer, who has not gone bust, wins the mission card. Most mission cards are worth a set number of victory points, but some give players one-off abilities that can be used at any time, allowing players to look at cards in their deck, or check the opponent's already played cards, or adjust their own mission total by plus or minus one point. Some mission cards will be accompanied by counterintelligence, and when these missions are won, the spy is witnessed. They take the number of notoriety tokens shown on the counterintelligence card, and at the end of the game, after six rounds of play, the players total their victory points from the mission cards they've collected, and add one victory point per notoriety token. But if a player has nine notoriety tokens at any point in the game, they lose the game immediately. Hence, the game features two layers of push your luck, attempting to score higher than the other player on each mission while staying under 21, and amassing notoriety while staying under nine tokens. Okay, so now you've seen how the game works, I'm going to introduce you to my co-designer, Rob Fisher, and we'll have a little look at the process of developing this game. Let me introduce you to Rob Fisher, my co-designer for Compromat. Um, oh. And Rob was also my co-designer for the game Quasal, which I've also probably already posted a video about at this point because we've just talked about Quasal, or maybe I'll post about it afterwards. But one way or the other, there's going to be another video about Quasal that you can watch. But today we're talking about Compromat. Um, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what 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 should we what, tell me about Compromat, Rob? What is it? Compromat is uh, published by Helvetique. It's a two-player game part of their after dinner line of games um, and it's based around blackjack um, one way of thinking about it is that you're playing four hands of blackjack simultaneously essentially um, we have a, a strong theme on the game of uh, spies who are trying to get secret information or suppress secret information um, let's go back to the beginning yeah. Of the design of the of, of the design because I think there's a couple of points there that that reminds me of really so it okay. so it came about originally because I had been playing a lot of Lost Cities mm -hmm. and Hannah Makoji and Battle Line and Trambarn which is a lookout game and these all were two player only games which had a sort of row of sort of cards that you would compete over with your your opponent. Um, and I quite fancied having a go at designing a game along those lines. And uh, where Battle Line basically takes poker and 
and and and you you sort of play poker but spread your you know your poker hands across you know you split your poker hands and spread them across these different missions i wanted to do that with um blackjack uh i, I like push your luck games i like games like quacks of quedlinburg and ink and gold or diamant um and um captain carcass or um uh, Dead Man's Draw, those sort of games. So anyway, I, I wanted to create something like that. So I created a game that was all about pirates uh, competing over different uh, locations. Um, and it, I mean, it was fantastic. My <laughs> And so I took it to the game design group and I showed it to Rob and a few others. And uh, Rob didn't think it was very good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really liked the idea. I, I'm a huge fan of Battle Line. Um, and I thought what you were doing, trying to find a, a game with a similar feel, but with a, another classic card game at its heart, was a brilliant idea. But I do have to admit, I didn't like that uh, original implementation. Um, and it, it sort of bugged me because uh, I, I found I couldn't stop thinking about it, despite not enjoying the experience. Um, and for, as far as I'm concerned, the next part of the story is, is where I was sat in a waiting room for an hour, waiting for a, a doctor. Um, and I, I had nothing with me, so I, I sort of started thinking about this game. And I, I tried to, I, I remember asking myself, what specifically is it that I don't like about this design? And I, I came up with, uh, I think, four things. I said, fine. So if I can just fix those four things, and present it back to Adam, um, to see if he likes it. Maybe uh, we can move the design on, um, yeah, and achieve your, your your original goals. Yeah. So you, so Rob, then I think you came to my house and you had a deck of playing cards, and uh, yeah. got the, and, and then we sort of set it up, and you said, right, these are these are children, and they are in rowing boats and they're trying to get to central islands. And so we had this sort of little theme, but essentially the core gameplay was very similar to the final Compromat game. Yes. Um, and then you kind of left it with me to mull over. And so I played a bit with it and I also thought a lot about the theme and I came back to you and suggested maybe we were burglars trying to climb up to get into windows. Um, and you said you'd had similar ideas and we talked about having a, a bunch of tools that you would use in a burglary. Um, yeah, trying you... to work out what the cards represented, that the cards that you're playing, were they, were they gonna be people? I think we talked about anthropomorphic animals at one point that you had this little- You talked uh, about uh, them being some sort of like, demon in a nightmare trying to steal children's <laughs> dreams at some point, I seem to recall. I did, but um, <laughs> yes, that, that falls into the category of, of when uh, racking your brain for ideas, it's better just to say it, to get it out of your, your mind. I'm not sure that dream stealing games are big sellers generally. I remember showing my wife uh, the sort of these images that I had put together for the for the burglary version with all the burglary tools and stuff and and I showed it to her and said you know would you play this game and she said no it looks like a game for <laughs> serial killers why would I play that so um so then we then I sort of moved on to this idea of uh, of spies um, which which seemed to seem to fit really well yeah uh, um, and uh yeah we just i think we play tested a lot with the to kind of get the distribution of the cards mm. right so that you were you know incentivized to try and risk getting to 21 yeah. um yeah we were trying to maximize the sort of push your luck aspect of the game we wanted you to constantly be on a knife edge and to try and find as, as many different ways of putting the player on that knife edge uh, as possible so things like the notoriety system that uh, came into the game. Um, and yeah, how can we incentivize the player to try and get that 21 as often as possible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and it came together pretty quickly, really. Then there was a bit of back and forth trying to work out the special powers and things that would be on the different pieces of, of equipment. Yeah. Um, that was quite fun working on those different bits and pieces. I think that came together when you 
rightly pointed out that we needed to keep it simple and that all the special items should work in the same way that they would be single use items because before that I, I dreamt up all sorts of wonderful things but some of them were like passive effects and some of them were things you could use repeatedly some of them you'd use on your turn some of them you could use on your opponent's turn and some of them got, would go into your deck and give oh, you yeah, yeah. cards in your deck and things like that and, and they were nice ideas but they were far too complicated um e each one had to be explained exactly what it did and exactly when you could play it and you were absolutely right to streamline that to all the tools all the effects cards work in exactly the same way i always have my eye on a publisher as well uh and i'm with a card, game like this i was very tempted to try and keep it language independent and not have any text on it and i know the eventual version does have text on it um but it probably could have managed without just icon based because there aren't that many powers and the powers are pretty simple and so uh, I, I always think, uh, you know, just just being able to say to a publisher, this game could be language independent is is quite a nice sort of selling point, really. So that's another part of the reason I wanted to keep those things really simple. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, we toyed with the idea of more than two players. But I think when we tried that, it was very unwieldy. There were cards everywhere, all over the table, lots of downtime. It wasn't really any fun, was it? <laughs> with more no. than two. No, it was, uh, as soon as we tried it multiplayer, it, it just absolutely confirmed that this is a, a great two-player game, essentially, which was nice, because uh, it, it meant we didn't then have to go off uh, rebalancing the decks, how's it going to handle three players, four players, and so on. It, it just absolutely was what it was. So I took it off to, uh, to Essence Spiel and showed it to a few publishers, not many, uh, but I showed it to Helvetik, to Hadi Barkat. I hadn't met Hadi before. I hadn't shown anything to Helvetik, although I really like their, their games. I like the graphic design and the boxes and the way they're packaged, the way they're sold. I think they're, uh, you know, they, they stand out as something a bit different. Um, and, some, and, and there's something quite clever and um, canny about the way that they market their games. And, um, you know, it just feels like a company that knows what it's doing. So anyway, when I met with Hadi, uh, Hadi absolutely loved it. Um, we played it. He, you know, I, I could just tell that he, he got it. He understood what the game was. He enjoyed it for what it was. Um, and I remember coming away from that meeting and saying to Rob, you know, we, I actually had a lot of, a lot of interest in the game throughout that SM, but coming away and saying to Rob, do you know what, what I want to, I want to go with Helvetique if they, if they offer, I, I don't want to wait for the others. I want to, I want to go with Helvetique. And, uh, you were, Happy with it? I think you trusted me on it, basically. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was a case of um, trusting your co-designer. Um, I think I, I've known you long enough that, uh, yeah, I, I, there's this, this level of understanding between us. I know what your, your values are. And I think we both appreciate um, enthusiasm uh, enormously. And, and when I got that first text from you describing Hadi's reaction to seeing the game, uh, just it's one of the feelings I love, a sort of childish delight that you've found something that you know is fun and you just can't wait to, to play it. And that seemed to be the way he, he'd reacted to the game. So yeah, a, a great choice of, of publisher to go with. And then the eventual, um, I mean, it's a bold design, isn't it? It's a bold design choice, this orange and blue with the stripes and the I mean, what would you call that design? It's almost something a bit retro about it. There's something a bit psychedelic about it. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I love it. I love the confidence of the design. I love the fact that everything from the outside of the box to the design of the individual cards doesn't look like any other game. It's even the inside uh, of the box that goes, yeah. you know, it spreads around everywhere. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure there are some people who won't like it and some people might not like it in a in a strong way but um they're wrong <laughs> <laughs> i think they're wrong as well if they don't i'm sure that i'm sure that's not the case i'm sure the vast vast majority of people are going to love this design but it, it the, the most important thing is it's it looks like nothing else on the market it's it really stands alone and and i think it's just extremely striking uh i think there was something very sort of Russian about the, the 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 font and everything. It all just, I don't know. To me, it, it just feels right for a, a spy type game. It looks 
classy, I think, and sort of classic. Um, and they're putting this in their after dinner line. And we all, all like to think that our dinners are terribly sophisticated. And, and just the way Hattie described it, push, pushing the plates back and then, uh, yeah, maybe the dark glasses go on and the game comes out and uh, uh, this fierce competition begins. I, I, I love it. I totally buy into that. Uh, Hattie was very, um, oh, I think it was Felix actually, wasn't it? The graphic designer, Felix, um, who sort of said he wanted to know the story. You know, it wasn't enough to just say these are two spies competing over some missions. They want to know what's going on. And that's where this compromat idea came from, you know, that these, are, these aren't just two spies competing. They're specifically competing to control information. And so that informed then the sort of pictures that he put in for the missions, uh, you know, the, the, the waitress, the, the, you know, all these different locations and, and, and the, the, the items, the drones and the, um, you know, the USB sticks and all this sort of stuff. Um, you know, he, I think he was, he, he, he was very much driven by having, you know, it's not a deeply thematic game as, as you've already gathered from the fact we tried out various different themes, but, but it was important to him as the designer that he, that, that theme carried all the way through. And you see that in the other games, actually, I think, uh, the other games in the, um, after dinner range, Captain Bluff and Omerta both have, um, stories you know, within the game, even though the games are relatively simple and, um, you know, and, and, and based on sort of classic, uh, classic games, uh, classic sort of public domain games, um, but developed into these bigger things, but they've got a story running through them. I thought that was nice. Yeah, I really like a, another sort of bold decision on the part of Helvetique was although they were going for this retro classy stylish graphic design, um, they're not setting it in the past. We're not in the 50s or 60s. We've got the latest cutting edge gadgets. We are, we are flying drones uh, over each other's territory and we are uh, sabotaging computers and so on. And, and I just love that um, clash. I don't know what you'd call it. It's, it's, it needs a composite name like cyberpunk or something like this. It's, it's like um, noir tech or something like that, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Rob. Um, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks. All right. Very fun to chat. Okay, bye. Cheers. So if you're interested in uh, Compromat, as I said earlier, you can play it on Tabletopia for free. I'm going to just flag up, there's a little bug in that game. So if you, if you go onto Tabletopia and you play it, uh, Tabletopia will sometimes delete your deck of cards in the middle of the game. So if that happens to you, you don't have to stop. You don't have to stop playing. What you have to do is select the area around your deck where the cards have disappeared. So drag around that with your mouse. Uh, and then press the flip button and it'll flip all your cards face up Then you can flip them face down again and they'll be back on the table Just a little tip because I know some people have hit that bug that's that's a tabletopia bug um, But you can play the game for free try it out and then the game is available through the Helvetique web store uh, It's available in German in French and in English at the moment uh, And it'll be going out to various different distributors and starting to become available in retail stores over the next few months so uh, I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you learned a little bit about co-design or, or maybe you're just interested in the game, which is great too. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel, Adam's Board Game Wales. Watch some of my other videos. I've got loads of videos about game design and games that I enjoy, just chatting about games in general. Or follow me on Twitter at Board Game Wales or on Board Game Geek, I'm Adam78. Thank you very much for watching. All the best.